Thanks for staying with us. Gauteng's health care... CEO finally reached out and asked uh, that I come through, and uh, which I did the following day. I uh, changed my entire schedule just so that I can get there. And uh, upon arrival, I must say it was very disappointing. Uh, the CEO uh, was very, I uh, was, was rude to my staff. As you know, I'm the MMC, so before I go anywhere, uh, my staff will go before me, uh, the support staff. And uh, basically, the CEO didn't want to allow the support staff in, was very disrespectful. I finally arrived, and uh, as you also know, that MMC has protectors. Uh, so my protectors, very big boat and bolt, and uh, he was, uh, uh, they assumed that he is the Patriotic Alliance president, uh, Gaten McKenzie. And as a result, um, uh, the, the staff was not allowed uh, to come in, the support staff was not allowed to come in. She finally invited me in. I, I then I requested, can the staff come in? She she refused, but she had support st support staff there. And I said it would be impossible for us to uh, continue with the meeting without my support staff uh, coming in. We waited for about 40 minutes before we could be seen. And uh, that obviously was uh, a show of unnecessary power, ego. And that's really what all of this is about. And I, I think we've, we've, we need to come to a place where we start putting the needs of our people first and stop trying to, to show power. We are called uh, to serve. And so in a nutshell, the meeting then obviously didn't happen. And uh, I don't have authority over the uh, CEO of hospitals, any CEO of any hospital, because I'm the MMC. Hospitals are provincial competencies, so the MEC has to decisively deal uh, with the CEO. But mine is to hold her accountable, and I want to reassure uh, the citizens of this city that I will definitely do that. I will continue to visit that hospital. We are writing to the MEC so that decisive action is taken against uh, the CEO. But I definitely don't think that that's the CEO that should run the hospital, because you need to be called uh, to serve people the most vulnerable in our communities. And I don't see that coming through. But it's about to change in the city of Johannesburg. I'm not ready to back down. So, Ashley, the, the, the answer that you've given us now is quite worrying because you're basically saying that uh, those that are in these positions that, as you mentioned, are supposed to be looking after the most vulnerable in our society and are going to our government facilities for health care, you're being treated this way. So you start asking yourself the question, how are the people that are going to these hospitals that are desperate for health care being treated? And I just want to ask you, how are you going to handle the situation going forward? Because when we try and engage with the MEC, we've tried to have her on the show and we've been told she's unavailable for interviews. So I'm just trying to understand what your plan of action is going forward as an MMC. Well, I can only act within the ambit of the powers that I have. Um, I can continue my visits there to make sure, and that, of course, uh, will at least put pressure for the service to change because uh, I, I can arrive there and provide oversight and make sure that, uh, that, that the most vulnerable is treated with dignity and respect. Um, so I'm not going to allow them to use uh, the whole element of it's not a local competency, it's a provincial competency. I might, the, the CEO might not report directly to me. However, I am a custodian of health in the city of Johannesburg. The people that that hospital serves, I'm responsible for. And on that basis, I'm not ready to back down. I'm going to visit that hospital. Like I said, I'm writing to the MEC, and the MEC has to act decisively. If the MEC does not act decisively, then that speaks a lot about what this government thinks about our people. But uh, I can commit that I will do what is in my power to do, just like what I will do with clinics, which is now my direct competency. So the CEO should be very thankful that she doesn't report to me directly.
Ashley, speak to us about other uh, clinics or hospitals or healthcare facilities for that matter uh, in Johannesburg that you are concerned about because many would say that there is a huge concern that there's a crisis in our healthcare system in this province and there's just too much going wrong with very little explanation and action being taken to sort this out. Um, what is your understanding and sense of what is truly going on in our clinics, in our healthcare facilities in Johannesburg? It's two things, Heidi, and I don't think that we must tiptoe around these issues. Two th things. Number one, it's bad service delivery. As a matter of fact, it's not even bad. It's putrid service delivery from us as government. And I can run away and use as a scapegoat that I wasn't there before. I'm just here for a month. I can go and, and scapegoating. But inheritance means that you get something which is given to you, but once you have it, it's yours. I've inherited this problem in the city of Johannesburg with, with uh, uh, concerning poor health uh, service delivery. I have to own that. I have to take responsibility. So I don't blame nobody. I'm saying we need to take responsibility as government. I'm now government on local level. Therefore, I need to take accountability and deal with the problem. That's poor service delivery as it relates to health. That's the one issue. The second one is is the influx of illegal uh, immigrate, immigrants, illegal foreigners. Uh, it is a fact, and we should stop trying to run away from that. And we need to all stakeholders, all governmental levels, local, province, and national, we need to come together and deal with this problem. We need to better our health services, and we need to deal with illegal immigration because it affects South African citizens we need to put South African citizens first, and we need to ask ourselves, what must we do to get a business class type health service for the most vulnerable in our communities? And that is my commitment, and whatever I need to do, I'm going to do that. And, and I'm still saying that I can't, but we can. It takes a we approach, not an I approach. Mm, I mean, I just I always say this, you know, when people think about going to a government health care facility, people think twice because they are just so scared of the kind of treatment and service they are going to receive. Um, and while we have good nurses and good doctors, uh, it becomes very difficult when a facility is deteriorating. I just want to ask you one last question, Ashley. You mentioned something about uh, illegal immigrants, and I want to know if you know the extent of uh, the problem and the strain that undocumented um, foreign nationals are putting on our hospitals because this is something that has been um, brought up and explained to say that a lot of our hospitals in the city are unable to deal with the influx because where do these people go if they need if they need um, health care facilities and, and, and health services? No, that is definitely a fact. But we should ask ourselves in the same way that we uh, that we defend the rights of illegal immigrants. I'm asking, in my language, in my cultural disposition, there's a term that we use that says, hutismut balance. Stuff don't balance for South Africans. How can you send a South African citizen away from the hospital because he or she doesn't have a clinic card or that person is from another ward or another area within the parameters of the city of Joburg? They look them in the eye and send them away and say, you are not in the vicinity, the geographic vicinity of this hospital, so you can't come here. But when an illegal immigrant comes, they, they don't treat them in the same way. We are not saying that you should, be, you should not be compassionate. But my problem is, how come the same compassion is not shown for South African citizens? And that's really the problem here. And so we need to, we need to deal with the illegal immigration issue, but then also we need to start prioritizing serving South African citizens. Who does not balance? Okay, great. Thank you so much for that uh, update. We do appreciate it. And I just hope the powers that be are actually listening to uh, the voices on the ground and the realities that people face every single day in our health care facilities. That was the MMC for Health and Social Development in Johannesburg, Ashley Souls.